All right, in this video, we want to talk about tuples. And I'm just going to add a comment here. A tuple is a typed array with a predefined length and type for each index. So again, I'm going to create that colors array that we did in the previous video. And I'm going to say this is an array of strings. So for example, I will have two elements, red and blue, and that would be our array. But this way, I can push other elements to this array if they are type string, for example, some other string here. This will not give me an error because I'm just saying this is an array with infinite numbers of elements. But with tuples, we can say what type should be each element and how many elements are allowed. So I'm going to comment this out or delete it either way. And I'm going to create a new variable with let because I just want to initialize it without a value. And I'm going to call it password. And imagine this is a pattern for a password. So with tuples, we can set the type to an array. So you notice we are starting with the brackets, not with a type. And then within the brackets, we can set the types. So for example, I want a number, I want a string and a boolean, and maybe another number. So I'm saying my password variable must be an array of four elements where the first element is a number, then a string, and then a boolean, and then another number. So now let's assign a value to password. So I'm going to say password equal to now here, if I say a string, this is of course an error. If I pass a number, it's an error. If I pass an array, which is empty, again, there's an error and you can see it says the source has zero elements, which is this one, but the target requires four. We said we need four elements. So we need a number, we need a string, let's say Bob, we need a Boolean, let's say true, and then another number. So you notice as soon as I add the number, the error is gone. So because we are following the exact pattern up here. But if any of these things change, for example, if this last one was a string, we have an error. If we had only three elements, again, we have an error. If we had more than four elements, let's say another Boolean, then again, we have an error. So anything except this pattern will give us an error. So a tuple can be very useful where you expect certain number of element with specific types. Now we could also have named tuples. For example, Right now, this password, it just says we need a number, a string, boolean, a number, but it doesn't say what's the purpose of them or where they go. Let's have a better example. For example, we are creating a chart and we need the values for that chart. So I want to have an array with numbers and string. Now, normally in a chart, we have an X axis and a Y axis and maybe some text. So I will have a property called X and the type of that should be a number. So this is how we can define a named tuple. So it's very similar to an object. So I also want a Y property, which should be a number. Then for example, I want an X label that should be a string and a Y label that also should be a string. So down here, for example, I want to have a new chart value. So I can say chart and assign that to an array. Now, if you hover over this chart, you can see it tells us that we need an X, we need a Y, we need an X label. So this is more descriptive and we are providing more context to what these values are. So again, we can add some numbers here, just random and two strings, and we will be fine. Now these are all arrays. That means we could also destructure them. Let's say I want to grab the X and Y from this chart. So I can say X and Y in the brackets and then assign that to chart. Let's log that X and Y to the console and see what we get. So we should get these two numbers. So I'm going to save the document. That means in our app.js, we have all that code. Let's go to our terminal and run that JS document. So I'm going to open a new tab in the same directory. And in order to run a JavaScript file, we can use no. And then the directory where our app.js is. So it is inside the build folder and then app.js. So we get those numbers into the console, which are coming from here. All right, so we learned about tuples and also named tuples and also destructuring them. I just want to add a side note here in our app.js, you notice we are also including all the comments. We could avoid this by going to our TS config file and just search for comments. And we have this statement or property that says remove comments and it is set to true, but it's commented out. So if we bring it back, and save it and then save our TS document. You notice in our app.js, we don't have any comments anymore. All right, so that's about this video. Next one will be about objects.